You are watching supporters of former Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro break into a government building in the country's capital of Brasilia. According to the Associated Press, on Sunday, rioters broke windows, toppled furniture, hurled computers and printers to the ground. They punctured a massive Emiliano di Cavalcanti painting in five places. They overturned the U-shaped table at which Supreme Court justices con convene. They ripped a door off one of the justices offices. Uh, they also vandalized an iconic statue outside the court. As you can see from these scenes of the riots, a lot of parallels with what we experienced here in the United States on January 6. But believe it or not, the Jair Bolsonaro supporters managed to be even goofier and more embarrassing than the Trump supporters here in the United States because they decided to carry out this riot on Sunday when there are no government officials present. So there was really no plan in place other than calling for the military to essentially conduct a coup, something that the country of Brazil is familiar with. But when soldiers arrived to the scene, these individuals were actually arrested and the military did not assist them in conducting a coup. Now this follows the election of its new leftist president, Inacio Lula da Silva. Of course, Jair Bolsonaro is known as the Trump version of Brazil. In fact, after the election, he decided to travel here to the United States, met with all sorts of unsavory figures, including Stephen Miller and Steve Bannon. And he is still in the United States. He was actually just hospitalized for abdominal pain. And there are calls for him to be extradited for allegedly inciting the rioters. Now, I have a few more details, actually a lot more detail to share with you. And you don't wanna miss those details because it's fascinating what's happening in Brazil right now. But before we get to that, Cenk, just some first reactions. Yeah, look, the parallels between January 6th here in America and, and what happened there is uncanny. There's, you, they broke in in very similar ways. Uh, and Bolsonaro right now is in Florida getting advice from Republicans. Um, and so his supporters do exactly what Republicans do. Uh, Republicans did here in January 6th. So the plague that is Donald Trump, continues to spread throughout the globe. And I can't believe that America has made attacking democracy chic in the world now. Well, uh, it's I mean, really stomach churning. <laughs> to be fair, America made uh, destroying democracy extremely chic in a lot of Latin American countries in the history, in you know the world history. Um, so they love to overthrow leftist leaders, but in a weird twist, in this case, you have President Joe Biden and his administration showing support for Lula da Silva and, of course, condemning Jair Bolsonaro and the rioters. Now, here are some more details. It's important to note that Lula da Silva seems to be a lot more aggressive in ensuring that there is justice brought to those who have suffered the consequences of these rioters. So thousands of people have already been arrested. We'll hear from his speech in just a moment, but a few more details before we do so. Bolsonaro had been stoking belief among his hardcore supporters that the electronic voting system that was used in the election was prone to fraud. Though he has, much like Trump, never presented any evidence. And his lawmaker son, Eduardo Bolsonaro, held several meetings with former US President Donald Trump, Trump's longtime ally, Steve Bannon, and his senior campaign advisor, Jason Miller. I believe earlier I said Stephen Miller. I mix the two up all the time. Apologies for that. Now, in yet another parallel to January 6th in the United States, of course, there were some questions as to whether the police were either complicit in this attack or if they were just ill prepared. Police were noticeably slow to react. Even after the arrival of more than 100 buses carrying Bolsonaro supporters, of course, one video showed one group of protesters easily pushing through a police barricade with only a few officers using pepper spray. Another showed officers standing by as protesters stormed the Congress, including one using his phone to record what was happening. And there are plenty of videos just all over the internet where you can clearly see the identity of the individuals who decided to riot on Sunday. Um, now, the federal district uh, governor, Ibanez Rocha, uh, confirmed that he had fired the capital city's head of public security uh, because of their slow reaction to the rioters. 
And as I mentioned earlier, Lula da Silva is not holding back in calling for justice here. Here is a little piece of his speech following the riots. Nós achamos que houve falta de segurança. E eu queria dizer para vocês que todas essas pessoas que fizeram isso serão encontradas e serão punidas. E nós, inclusive, vamos descobrir quem são os financiadores desses vândalos que foram à Brasília. Nós vamos descobrir os financiadores e todos eles pagarão com a força da lei esse gesto de irresponsabilidade, esse gesto antidemocrático e esse gesto de vândalos e de fascistas. So in that speech, Lula da Silva, of course, mentioned a decree. I want to give you a few more details on that. It's he read a freshly signed decree for the federal government to assume control of security in the federal district. He said that the so-called fascist fanatics, as well as those who finance their activities, must be punished and also accused Bolsonaro of encouraging their uprising. And there are already officials in Brazil who have called for the extradition of former President Jair Bolsonaro back to Brazil so he could face a possible investigation. This is where the similarities end because here authorities appear to be taking action, unlike in America, where they're like, um, uh, attempted coup against the country. I don't know, we're gonna have to ask permission of the people who attempted the coup to see if we could prosecute them. No. No, you just go after them and you arrest them. It's not that complicated. And by the way, the people here know it's not that complicated because they do it to the schleps who were part of the riot in the first place. So both Brazil and the United States arrest people that were on the ground and broke into the buildings. But when it comes to the people who organized the coup, America refuses to arrest them, absolutely. Because they were part of the elites. And so the elites number one rule is never ever arrest another elite Unless, of course, they stole from rich people, other rich people, then they, then you can get arrested. But other than that, even a coup won't do it. But in Brazil, they're instantly firing people, arresting people. And by the way, you saw there Lula saying they're fascists. See, no hesitation, no mealy mouth BS. Oh, some of my best friends are coup uh, committers. Coup committer, <laughs> is that a thing? <laughs> it's, it's actually a pretty popular rock band. Oh yeah, the coup committers, they're, they're <laughs> unbelievable. Joe Biden's still calling them their friend, his friends, so it's possible. <laughs> um, okay, look, look, last two things here for me. Uh, number one, uh, Lula and the others are 100% right in uh, pointing out this specific thing that, that we didn't bring you yet. Not only did people who paid for it in general, but who paid for the buses? Because if people are getting bussed in, somebody paid for those buses, that's the person who organized the coup. And that will unravel everything. Here, if it was America, you would find about it, uh, find out about it 40 years later when someone did an investigation, but no one would ever be held responsible. I hope they don't take that lesson from us. And Anna, of course you're right that we've done endless coups and organized them here in America. My point was one of the few things that we do right is a peaceful transition of power. And now Trump has destroyed that as well. So now the new precedent as well, if America's doing it, if I ever lose an election, of course I'm gonna try to do a violent takeover instead. And so that's what we're seeing now from his cult, his internet, Trump's international cult. And his, one of his capos is Bolsonaro, and that's why he's hiding out in Florida with Trump. And you know, just a little bit of Brazilian history, Brazil, had experienced a coup previously. It was a military coup at a time when I believe Jair Bolsonaro was part of the military. And my favorite part of this story, it's I mean, it's a terrible story. We've experienced it here in the United States, so I'm not making light of it. But I will dunk on the rioters, especially considering they're Jair Bolsonaro supporters, because they really thought the military was gonna come in and help them out. So let's go to graphic four here, because this is my probably my favorite tweet on the entire incident. Bolsonaro supporters cheering the arrival of the military right before getting arrested by them. <laughs> so they're like, yeah, military, help us coup, help us coup. And the military's like, yeah, hands behind your back, bro. We're, we're taking you in, okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, but you know, I do wanna also just quickly go to Jair Bolsonaro's response or reaction because it's similar to what you get here in the United States with right wingers. You know, on one hand, pretending to condemn the bad actors, but then drawing these false equivalencies. So he writes in a tweet, 
Peaceful demonstrations in the form of the law are part of democracy. However, uh, you know, he's talking about the rioters, invasions of public buildings as occurred today, as well as those practiced by the left in 2013 and 2017 escape the rule. So uh, I don't remember the left rioting in federal government buildings and demanding overturning uh, the results of a democratic process. <laughs> now, Jair Bolsonaro, of course, made Lula da Silva a political prisoner back in 2018 when Lula da Silva was of course favored to win that presidential election. So he had a judge essentially throw Lula da Silva in prison under these ridiculous and unfounded corruption charges and later that was completely thrown out by another judge. So if he really wants to talk about the bad actors here, he should take a good hard look at himself. Yeah, um, I'll give the last two comments to uh, members on Twitch. JMM Frazier said, all I see is a bunch of right wing tourists. And uh, and Mind Grifter said, fascism is our number one export right now. And that's depressing. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.